Tales Season 3. Welcome back everyone to the Screama Pura Tales. This is where we share chilling encounters and spine-tingling stories that will make your hair stand on end. I am Genesis. I am Hafiz Rahman. My name is Ravi J. And today we have a very special guest with us. We have Ashraf, who is a realtor. And you might know him from TikTok as the content realtor. Yes. So Ashraf, how long have you been in this business for? Uh, not very long. I think I'm only in this industry for about, this is my fourth year. Fourth oh, okay. year, okay. Fourth year. Yep. Started in 2021. Mm. Okay, so yeah. what is your goal as a realtor? Why do you like to get rich? Uh, aside from making money, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, basically, I didn't know that this is the I'm gonna be in this industry for long. I just wanted to try it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. That's why I went into it, and then uh, things started rolling from there. What yeah. were you doing yeah. before before you were a realtor? Uh, somewhat in the corporate line, I was working in law firms. Law oh. firms, doing oh. heavy paperwork. Oh. Yeah, I ask you, uh, my house got value or not? This house? Yeah. Okay, never mind. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking about haunted houses, Ooh, all right. I have, have? Uh, I have a friendly device mm-hmm. just to make things more exciting. Okay, for today's episode, before we even get into the stories, right? This is what we call an EMF sensor. Okay, ah. electromagnetic field sensor. So in case something happened and this thing um, starts ringing or buzzing, it means that we have a friend. So say hello. <laughs> okay, I have a very interesting story for that. Huh? For an incident that happened well, in EMF, to us, but I'll tell you about that later. Really? Yes. Later. It, it, it rang, is it? Yeah, it, oh, it not just. Okay. It okay. <laughs> okay. So when it beeps, that means that there is, we um, have friends there is around a shift us. in electromagnetic fields, okay. which means that uh, something is in the atmosphere. Okay. Hey, bang. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we get him to start sharing story. Yeah, la. okay. La. I feel like a, I feel like a, like a, like a paparazzi, okay? So, to uh, a team. Wow, nice. Good move. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ashraf, go. do you have any spooky encounters yeah. when selling houses? Okay, I think uh, I don't have any encounters when I'm transacting a sale or purchase. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank God for that. Uh, but I do have one, uh, I believe it's an experience that uh, I can share. Okay. Uh, it's regarding myself. Okay, so okay. before I became a realtor, so I can start the story. Yeah. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Very specific. So before I became a realtor, I was actually working in law firms. Uh, both of us were me and my wife, we were both working full time. Okay. It's yeah. So from there we actually wanted to buy our own house. We couldn't wait for a BTO, so we went for the resale route because it was fast it was faster. Mm. Mm-hmm. So we were shopping for houses in the east. And we finally viewed one unit. I like the unit in particular because the unit is Technically, how do I explain this? The unit was very... Uh, it's an ideal Malay house. Oh, okay, okay. Corner unit, uh, very privacy. Okay. And things okay. like that. Okay. So, I liked the house. Uh, the space was good. The moment I reached the house, there was an agent handling mm. the sale of that unit. Mm-hmm. So, when we came in, the there was only one seller there and there was one agent there representing the sale. So, the sellers, her eyes, she was alone. Her okay. eyes was bloodshot red as if she just uh, ended crying oh yeah yeah I I didn't know why I mean uh, none of my my business that's literally a red flag right there (laughs) no Uh, I wouldn't say that I mean she could have sore eyes and things like that oh okay yeah yeah, but that's just what I saw Mm -hmm. so uh, it could be she just ended crying I don't know so we went in Uh, unit was already vacant that means there was nothing in the house already like no condition wasn't perfect so we went in uh I viewed the kitchen first. My wife was on her own viewing the rooms. Then I slowly made my way to view each of the rooms mm-hmm. until we went to the last room. So basically, the living room was a rectangular shape because it was a corner unit. So uh-huh. it was a longish layout. Oh, sounds mm. really good actually. Yeah, it's good. So at the end, behind where the living room or TV co- TV console was, behind that, behind that wall was actually another room. It's a common room, not the master room. Mm-hmm. So that room was closed. So I wanted to view that room. I mean, we are, of we course are buyers. Not, right? So yeah. we wanted, we want, I wanted to look, view right? that room. But the moment I wanted to open that door, because the door was closed, mm. the rest of the rooms were open. So the moment I reached out to touch the doorknob, the agent told me, hey, stop, don't open. So that one was a red flag. Quite That's suspicious, yeah. 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 So I was a bit, uh, honestly, I was a bit, um, I wouldn't say weirded out, but... Um, Sussed it out lah. Yeah, a bit a bit suspicious lah. Like, why, why you can't let me view the... Now that you're a realtor, do you feel that that particular agent had a substantial reason behind what he did? 
Um, it could be. I mean, mm. there's no right or wrong. If the seller say that they don't allow you to view the whole house, you can only view the kitchen. Then you can only view the kitchen. Mm. But I mean, oh. it's not an effective way to make mm. a sale. Yeah. Ideally, you want to make a sale. You want to let the buyer. Why would you yeah, because you're yeah. buying the entire house, right? You cannot just don't buy that room, right? Yeah. You still must buy. You must see. So that room wasn't uh, permitted for me to go in. So okay. okay. Uh, I told my wife, it's okay. Uh, let's leave. So we are done. We left. Uh, in the car, I asked my wife, "How does it? She feel, how does she feel?" She said, "Okay, uh, everything was okay, but she saw something weird Ooh. in the rooms, which I didn't, mm. because I was too focused on the layout. How do I, where do I put this? How do I design the house and You're things like that?" Thinking right. about it, yeah, I was mentally well. picturing how the house is gonna mm. look like in the future. Yeah, uh, but she was more uh, paying attention to the small little details. So what she saw in the rooms, both rooms, the master room and the one of the common rooms, mm. uh, what she saw was a small note written in. It could be Arabic, it could be uh, scribbling, but it's a bit small, uh-huh. and it was located at every corner of the rooms. Okay. Ooh. So it's just pasted there. Uh, right. We have no. I don't know. I have no like idea what was it. Like on the ceiling. It's like a post-it uh. taped to the uh, on to the, the walls. Wall. Creepy. On the four walls. So uh, she didn't take a photo of it. Mm. So I also don't know how it looked like, but that's what that's what her description was uh, when she told me. So okay, uh, that was it. I didn't uh, at the end of the day I didn't buy that house. Mm. Mm. I bought another house. <coughs> But interestingly, uh, I think about two years later, when I was in uh, sorry, two years later I met a friend. So coincidentally, he was also looking for a flat back then when I was uh, in the midst of searching for a home. And uh, we were sharing because he was also looking for a house back then in the same area that I was. Mm. So he he told me that he also viewed the same house that I viewed. That oh, particular okay. house. So I said, "Hey, okay. Since you have already viewed that house, uh, do you guys? I mean, we discussed that the house was had a very good layout, mm. uh, very mm. ideal mm. privacy and things like that. But I said, 'Hey, did you manage to see that uh, room behind the, the locked room, right? The, yeah, ah. correct. That locked room. Yeah. I said, yeah. did you manage to yeah. view it? Yeah. Uh, he said he did. Oh. oh, so he said when it was his turn, all the, house, the all the rooms were open." Oh, so he, he was had after the possibility you. to view it. Okay. Right. So I told him what was inside. Ah. Oh. Because when it was my turn, the sellers, I think I missed this part. The sellers told me that that room was messy. Okay. Right. So the okay. Didn't okay. Didn't allow me to okay, okay. view it. Mm. Yeah. So when I when I asked Sus. him what was what Sus. was Sus. inside, right? Mm. Uh, he said actually there there was nothing much inside, uh, except for toys. So there were toys uh, all over the place. Mm. Messy but toys. But he was oh. given the opportunity to view it, but not you. Yes, correct. So, okay. the, in particular, the toys was yeah there was some dolls there, mm. but uh, primarily the room was filled with Legos, mm. Legos. Lego toys. Mm. Yeah. So uh, my friend had uh, a son or a daughter. I really cannot remember. So his son was actually playing in that room while he was viewing oh, the, okay. the whole house. Oof. So same thing. Um, they liked the house. Feeling. When they left the house. He also had his little discussion with his wife. Mm. How did the house went? Whether she liked it or not? Mm-hmm. Everything was okay. Wife liked the house. Wife mm. didn't notice a small slip of paper. Maybe it's not there anymore. Yeah. But uh, they asked the son or son or daughter. I really cannot remember. Uh, how did she or he find the house? Did she mm. like it? He said. Uh, so the son or the daughter said. Uh, let's just say it's a son. Uh. So the son said he actually liked the house, but while he was playing in the room, he said that this little sister <gasps> that was playing with him had a very ugly face. <gasps> But in all honesty, there was nobody there. Right. Oh. That imaginary friend. Imaginary friend. Yeah. Okay. I think I think it makes sense now that you were not allowed because you don't have a child. Yeah, I didn't have right? a child back then. But he yeah. had it. So had. maybe I, I don't know if I was a seller and I was trying to get rid of my house. The, the oh. kid is a good trap, right? But yes, <laughs> think about it. Think about it. To what to 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 befriend uh, the new buyers. Yeah. Oh. As in, you it. you went to view the house before your mm. friend. Yes, yeah. uh, it should be in the same period, lah. I don't Around know whether he viewed oh, before okay. me or I viewed after him. I really right. no idea. Oh, so I mean, have you not heard of stories where kids because kids tend to be friendly with this kind of ghost and therefore they yeah. don't want to leave the house or the place? Have you yeah, yeah, heard yeah, about yeah. it? I have. I've heard of stories yeah. of kids. It's yeah. because kids are more sensitive, right, to this kind I mean, of thing. They say that naturally. It's a, it's a belief, lah. I mean, probably in my culture, it's a belief that mm. kids tend are able to view the good and the bad. Right. No. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. It sounds like a trap to me. Do you remember as a kid if you were able to see things that you? Oh. I don't remember. Eh. Really? Yeah. For me, oh, I, maybe I'm just block. Ah. These things just don't want to make special. friends with me, just for for good reason. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I was always to, able to view my grandparents who passed away. 
Oh, I, I always thought it was dreams, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I, you know, what's the best mm. part? These are grandparents who have never even met. Uh, but yeah. you could describe How you know them. your grandparents? Because I've seen. Have you watched Amnesty Shyamalan's ah. movie? <laughs> <laughs> but the you know, visit. Yeah, you know, because I, 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 I know that them grandparents. I always thought it was dreams. So you talk to them. I've spoken to them before. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I choose to believe it's dreams. But okay. my parents, I don't know. I'm right, not too right, sure right. what they chose to believe lah, which mm. is why I I'm a firm believer of kids can naturally attract this kind of thing, like animals, right? Also speaking speaking of, so. of being able to attract and all that, mm. I'm very interested to know like in your years of being a realtor, mm. when you go to these houses and when you bring uh, potential buyers and clients, has there been numerous occasions or maybe just one or two where you can think of where you enter the house and you're like bad vibes, like you know, I mean. All of us have got that gut feeling, right? So mm. your gut feelings are telling you, uh, this house is not nice, like it's not clean, and and you like a bit hesitant to sell it to the seller. Have, has that? Oh, to, to the buyer, I mean, sorry. So has that ever happened where you have done that or been in that position? Uh, I have been once. Okay. Uh, I didn't see anything in the house. I didn't mm. see any ghosts, nothing. Mm. But it's just that that house gives me this um, creeps. It, it's creeps, really, okay. because that creeps, house. What do you mean? Uh, because that house is already uh, okay. It was a, it's an administration sale. Meaning it's okay. a house that I have to sell because the owners have passed on okay. and no one is going to take over the house. So it right. needs to be sold in the open market. Mm. Right. Uh, I sell the house as per normal. It's just that I, I'm also quite uh, scared. Lah. Mm. So I would arrange the viewings in the day. Ah, right, okay. right, right, particularly right, right. in the day. Nothing, okay. nothing after four, nothing after five. Okay. Okay. So yeah. this so particular house, if I may come back to that, yeah. though people have moved in, they live there now. No, not yet. Not yet. Not it's yet. Still it, empty. It's sold now. It's oh. so, uh, but the the buyers I think have not moved in yet. Okay. Quite recent. Right. Quite so recent. Buyers oh. viewed it. They didn't find it creepy or anything. Uh, but you'd be surprised. You know, I maybe, thank God they didn't yeah. find it creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that okay. thread about you saying that maybe they know because there's something inside mm. that. Uh, there's been many occasions where people are blinded because these things will not be there, and then I mean because they mm. they want you to come into the house, so yeah they la, would. Yeah you know, la, yeah la. Yeah. Try to trap you in, right? Okay, I have a question. I've been dying to ask a realtor this. Let's do this. If you know, it sounds scary. Man. No, no, it's not. Okay, okay. It's more of an administrative thing. <laughs> <laughs> if you know that yeah. someone has committed suicide in that mm. house, mm. are you supposed to tell new buyers that there was a death in the house, or it's like keep quiet? Would you disclose? Would you, would you disclose, or would no, you tell see, them? Very common, very common question. Oh, so, common, ah. Very common, actually. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, by law, I mean, uh, as realtors, we are governed by CEA. Mm -hmm. So, by law, if it's questioned by the buyers, then you have to disclose. Wait, pause. So, oh. if they question, if they question, highlight. Yeah. So, so if Genesis must, is getting mm. a BTO, she never question. It's okay, lah. It's okay. Genesis, how? Because it, must, it to me, it I kind of remember the question, lah. It kind of makes sense Everybody because remember. sometimes uh, you may feel scared. Okay. But you, example, like you are the buyer now. Mm. You come and view this house. Mm. This house that someone passed on, maybe suicide. Mm. I never tell you. Mm. But you come, you feel happy. You, ha you get all the good so vibes. Why mm. would I want to spoil that for you? Correct, True. correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. But have you ever had, taking a lead from that question, have you ever had any client saying that, hey, you sold me this house and now I'm, I'm facing this kind of. You know, yeah, has there been a, yeah. Or like, like no. you sold someone a house yeah. and then like maybe two three months they come mm. and say, "Bang, you sold me a haunted house." Yeah, something <laughs> like, like that. No, <laughs> have you so ever so no, no, so no, no, no. heard about other retailers, oh. uh, realtors telling you this? Uh, actually, no, uh, because I think uh, these supernatural things. If it comes, it comes. You also don't know whether it comes right three months later or it comes six months later after that's you sell. That's true. That's true. Mm. You really don't know. You don't. You've never heard anyone say this. But you have other realtor friends, right? Sorry. Like you have other realtor friends, right? Yes. But do they have any kind of? Experiences with these kind of things uh, when they, they were selling do, a house. They don't get these past clients calling them. Oh, right, right, them right, right, hey, right. This house problem oh. house you sell to me don't have lah. But when they were selling the house, they have had these kind of encounters. Uh, not when they are selling, but I think most of them, uh, it's either after they sell or before then they find out some story about this mm. house. Right? Oh, okay. Like it's just a backstory, but nothing spooky happened in the house. Yes, I feel like spirits naturally have this. Um, Understanding of what's mine is mine. Yeah. Possessiveness. And even oh, if I have passed on, mm. moved on, even in my afterlife, I hold on to it tight. Whether it's being family, possession, mm. and things, I, I you feel. Know, the, in one of the previous episodes, you were saying about keeping your possessions, right, of the dead. Yeah. This one is like the opposite the mm. dead keeping mm. their living possessions. For me, at least personally, I feel that spirits hold on really tight. 
mm. to possessions, mm. sometimes to people, sometimes to things, sometimes to even places. Okay. Mm, there are still. I Creepy. feel like even though we think that they might have gone or left already, right? Mm. Dead, right? Mm. People say, but it still feels very alive to me. I feel like full of life, you know, like that's it's true. oxymoronic. That's I know. True, ironic. I, I think good spirits they move on, mm. but people with un unfulfilled desires or maybe something else like is holding them back, they remain. Okay, and they, and they mm. really keep their close ones. I want to go back to Ashraf a bit. Ashraf, yep. I'm sure it happens to all of us. Like when mm. we share stories, especially like for myself when I share podcast, I do it in my bedroom. I close the door and then I just have my microphone and I just share my stories. So there's been many occasions where I always feel like sometimes I don't feel nice, right? Like, I mean, you, you have that gut feeling, like, you know, like something you get too invested. wants you to not talk about it or yeah. when I get too yeah. involved in the story, then I'm like, yeah, I don't feel nice about it. So I always wrap ah. it up. But I wonder if that has ever happened to you where you are sharing a story and then you don't you feel got, good. You like, quite emotional. Uh, that one happens like almost all the time when I'm telling the story. Because basically really, yeah. when I make the videos that me of me telling stories, I'm usually in my living room. Mm. Right. Uh, I off the lights on purpose just to make it a bit dark. Mm. And mm. the timing has to be usually after 12. Why? Oh. Because my children. Oh. 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 No, because I have, three, I have three kids. Three kids. Oh. La. Okay, 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 okay. By like 10 plus. Okay, ah. okay. So only after that, then I can gather down yeah. what the story is. Is your wife mm. at, at, at the side keeping your company? No, no. She's attending to the okay, kids. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So you're so alone in the dark room. Ah. So when I tell the story at that timing mm -hmm. in my living room, being alone, yeah, la, it creeps me out. Mm -hmm. So I'll usually just quickly, quickly tell, pack up and head to bed. Yeah, I, I think I think that's the reason why horror is such a everlasting and well-loved genre because it encompasses all social status mm -hmm. and demographics. And you know, it catches like, the attention. You know, so, so comedy is subjective, yeah. but horror mm. is horror, you know? True. Yeah, it's timeless and ageless. Raman, right? Yeah. Right? Right? True. Speaking about Hafiz Rahman, Hafiz Rahman has got a story <laughs> about Let's my house, this. okay? Uh, so I live in the northern part of Singapore, right. very problematic estate. Uh. It's a very nice place. So, of course, as, as, as good Muslims, when we enter the house, uh, we, we do prayers and, and, and all that. And yeah. then we, we try to cleanse the house of any mm. sort. Mm. Um, so everything was normal. So everything was normal. So I've, I've stayed there. Since COVID it's been about four years. Oh, wow. mm. uh, so nothing has happened until recently. So okay, recently because of the fact that all of us are working in the house. So my mom is very like, she insists that, okay, you know what? Let's all not do the housework. Let's find someone to come like three days a week to come and clean the house. So we had this, this person. So this lady, she is uh, from Indonesia, but she married a Singaporean, right? Um, and she would come to my house like three or four times a week to clean, uh, you know? She's very good and, and she's very good at what, what she does because I think she has experience and all that, right? Mm. So we were very happy because like we need someone to help us to mop and sweep the floor mm. and then uh, and do all this, all this kind of stuff. So nothing has supernatural has ever happened. So please bear in mind that I do my Berhantu podcast in my bedroom, you know, and I've been doing it for about two years. So there's nothing that happened. Oh. The usual scratches, um, someone skipping upstairs, it's normal, like, yeah. you know, it's normal, normal HDB noises, like, like, yeah. whatever, like, you know. Guys. Uh, it's it's <laughs> yeah, so I just well, you know, but there's been one, okay, there's been a couple of occasions where this lady would talk to my mom because she's very close to my mom, right? Because my mom will give her instructions on what to do. Mm. So it all started from this one day. She said to my mother, she just looked at my mother in the eye. She said, "Kaka ada orang jaga." So then she said, um, "Kaka, is there someone taking care of you?" My mother is like, "Who?" And she just and then she just looked behind my mother. Eventually, my, my mother, my mother would be like, turn now. You know, so my mom turn, and then uh, she's been like, Akan dia sudah lari. So, oh, see yeah. that thing ran away. So then my mom, my mom said, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got some. My mom is the kind of person who would make a joke out of everything, oh. just like me. Oh, okay. okay, so she's like, ah, yeah, the the the, the malu dengan kamu. She's very shy of you. So that's why she uh, oh. did this thing ran away. So my aunt, what is it? Oh, it's a man. Oh, okay, interesting. Now, bear in mind, ah, so. She would be in contact with my mother. So mm. sometimes when she cleaned the house, and she would always come at around 12 noon until 6 p.m., you know, like, like six hours. She would text my mother, um, uh, Kaka, uh, she called my mother, Kaka, Kaka, um, Saya tadi nampak ada lelaki uh, jalan dalam rumah. She said, I, I see a man walking in the house. Mm. So my mom would always text the group chat, I need you home, can you please say hello to auntie? Like, why are you so rude? Like, why don't I say hello? So like, I'm at work. And yeah. my father is at work, you know, my, my brother is at work, so there's no one. And then she said, oh, okay. Then then, then the, the lady said, oh, okay, okay, like, it's okay, it's okay, there's nothing happened. 
So all this happened without us knowing, right? Until one fine day, so my mom, so I was, I, I still remember I was in school, I was teaching. I received a text from my mother. My mother said, please come back home now. There's something inside my room. I said, what is it happened? So apparently, so my mom works, she is in hospital. Mm. So that, that time she was on night shift. She got back, she, she finished work at 7 a.m. So she would go back home. She would reach home at around 9 o'clock. And she would like take a shower and she would sleep, catch up on sleep, lah, right? And she said, this happened around 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Ooh. She said, I was asleep. Probably and then, like, yeah, and then I felt something, gross. something uh, sitting at the edge of my bed. So when I opened my eyes, she said, I have the text. Later, I'll read you guys the text. She said in detail. She said, "Ada lelaki diri dekat depan uh, katil. Dia tengok mama. She said, there's, there's a man standing in front of the bed, bed looking at me. So then I'm teaching. I can't go back home. I have students <laughs> which I'm like, oh, what does it look like? She said, oh no, it's just tall and black. So before that, she said, before that, because my mom stays in the, in the master bedroom, she says, someone is flushing the toilet someone is Ooh. and okay, my father is very old school my father doesn't use the shower from the uh, uh, what call that the water heater mm. my father uses like the bucket you know yeah, okay, yeah, okay. The traditional man so someone has been taking the thing from the bucket and splashing water so she said it's not it's not cats it's not like my cats will always be out in the living room she said and there's something is... happened and she said someone tried to open the door so she said because she said I'm very tired you know I'm very tired maybe she said I'm just my tired man you know yeah. but the, 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 the thing that happened the, the nail on the head was when she said she saw this man and she said she tried to say some prayers but this thing wouldn't go away Mm. So they didn't go away, ah. like never look. Ah. It was tacked. The, yeah. Like, could he see the face? And my mother said, no, my mother, okay. So my mother, my mother has Oof. seen these things like a lot of times. There's once, I still remember when we were living in the old house, she said, mm. there's a man, <sighs> I don't know why I should, I'm telling you guys this, there's a man that's playing with fire inside the room. Whoa. She said, Ooh. there's a man, he's black, he's black, um, he's wearing like a kain sarong, uh-huh. he's black, he has horns. And he's playing with fire in front of her, oh like God. taunting her, like Ooh. you know. The devil. Yeah. yeah so my mom, my, my mom is very weird. My mom will like tell you, "Hey, can you please close the door? There's a there's a tiger trying to enter the house." <laughs> my mom is that person. Oh. <laughs> so so then I'm like, ah, maybe it's just one of the incidents. And after that, nobody responded, right? Mm. So she got really upset. She's like, "You all do not know what happened in this house." And I'm like, okay, but see, see that's the thing. Like, it only affected her. It doesn't affect any of the men in this house. But I, I wonder if, if you okay like we, we, we go back to, to Ashraf. Yeah, Ashraf, 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 Ashraf welcome back. <laughs> yeah, so like if, if you have any stories where you try to sell a house and then the machi mm. in the house, yeah. <laughs> just go like, kat rumah ni kan ada benda. Like, have you ever happened to no, you? No, thank God, no. No, uh. thank God, I don't have that. Kind Would of you? Issue, okay, I mean this is like an if question. Now, you know, okay, like okay, if right. you ever were in the process of selling a house and then you experience someone just telling you like actually this house is haunted, what would, what would, what would be your first step or what would be the right thing to do as a realtor okay of course I have to be professional lah. Mm. so I have to answer the inquiry I have to go and meet up mm. do the things that needed to be done mm. but I think when it comes to the actual work the operations going down viewing if there's someone there in the house that can accompany maybe the machis yeah. son machis yeah. daughter something that can accompany me there ah. I think I'm okay to do it but if I'm alone that means the either the machi would Excuse the house, leave the house to me to sell alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I would have reservations. Uh, Maybe I would mm. get a partner, a probably, colleague probably, probably. to accompany ah. me. I think something like that. Well, okay, why okay. would you not explore? Um, I don't know, like preachers and prayers to accompany you. Maybe they can. I don't know. Control. Okay, I think spirits in sense. Okay, in let's sense. say let's say someone comes to me and say that my house is haunted. Uh, I want you to help me sell my yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be the guy to. Suddenly, be the bring hero. The, suddenly bring yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. and handle your house. You don't want to do that. Because I'm pretty sure they've already done yeah. it before. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Like 9 out of 10 times, they probably would have. That's mm. fair. That's you know, fair. have tried to do yeah. it. But yeah. yeah. Okay, so Ashraf, so I want to ask you, right? Do you have a favorite horror stories? A favorite horror story that happened in like a house setting? Okay. Maybe like. Favorite, favorite don't have. But since the we spookiest are on, one. Most memorable. Let me just share my. Majinet, uh, ah, okay, story. okay, okay. So this one was a colleague of mine. He's mm. currently in my team now. Mm. Uh, nice. So he was selling this unit in. I can say this. Uh, I just won't mention the block. So in this unit plus. was. No, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. it's in. It's an <laughs> executive uh, Majinet. Uh, if you have been to executive Majinets, you would know that uh, some layouts you would come into the house and then there would be a room. Next yes, to yes, the yes, yes, kitchen, yes, 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 yes. Right? Is, it, is it the the extra room around the side? The one yes. right ah. by the corridor. Yes. Correct. Okay. So the, 
by right is the study room lah. So ah, you yeah, see yeah, yeah. on the floor plan is the yep. study room. Yep. Correct, correct, correct. So there was one study room on the first floor, and then the kitchen is there. Mm. So um, my colleague was selling this EM, and the seller said that uh, this EM needs to be sold fast because they needed the funds to go and finance their daughter's overseas uh, university or something like that. Wow. Okay. So they really need the funds fast. So they're going to downsize lah. They got, they, are just, they are just trying to cash out and they're gonna move to I think oh. Australia or New Zealand. At least oh, that's what okay. they said lah. That's what they said. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, fine. Uh, my colleague just marketed the house. When he marketed the house, he was alone because they they are usually out lah. So they will just pass him the keys. Yeah. Something like mm. that. So, marketed the house. No weird incidents. Nothing. Finally managed to get a buyer. Buyer bought the house. Deal done. Okay. Mm. okay. So everything was normal. Nothing. No buyer call back saying that you sold me a haunted house. Nothing. Yeah. But I think about maybe one year, two years later, my colleague bumped into this client, the same client, this who executive the who's who's his, the owners of oh. that EM. Okay. They are back in Singapore. They are back in Singapore. I think they met during the Ramadan oh. bazaar or something like that. Okay. 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 It was a it was a festive season. Okay. So they bumped into my colleague. Bumped into them. Mm-hmm. So they said, uh, "Hey, thank you so much for managing to sell our house back then. We actually referred a, colleague, a friend to you for for you to to engage you. Things yeah. like that, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normal small talk. Then the wife uh, put my friend to the side. Uh, then she said, um, actually, there's a little bit more to that EM. So she actually asked, do you find anything weird when you were selling the house? Things like that. So my friend said, actually, nothing much. Uh, everything was okay. Mm. So she said, okay, fine. Actually, the reason that they wanted to dispose or sell off that EM." wasn't for the finance of uh, wasn't to finance their daughter's, daughter's education, education. Okay, uh, but because just i think at the time they were selling that unit mm. just a few months back uh, their the wife's younger brother was actually staying with them okay. and he was occupying that study room at okay. the first floor mm. because he was actually bedridden okay so they had a helper to yeah, yeah, look after yeah. him okay. in that room so she said that he actually passed on some months back Before they wanted to sell the house, mm-hmm. okay. and the issue they had was because at multiple times of the day, the wife is a homemaker, so ah. she doesn't go to work. So she said at multiple times of the day, it could be at 4 p.m., it could be at 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Whenever she wants to come down the stairs, she, your first thing you see when you come down the stairs would be that study room. Okay. Mm-hmm. Multiple times of the day, she would come and she would still see her brother no. on the bed. So she really <sighs> had to get rid of that house, but she couldn't tell it to my. Click back then because she she doesn't want to freak him out because mm. she knows if she tell it she tell it to him he wouldn't want to sell. But anyone else in the family saw the dead um, uncle or younger brother? I think it could be something that the family already know, but uh, the one that uh, informed my colleague was the wife lah. But I the see. new settlers have no issues. Whatsoever. New settlers. <laughs> yeah, so far no calls to my colleague so till far, today. So far lah. So far okay lah. Safe lah. So oh. I guess the brother like I said you see. It, for him, I believe for him it was not about the house, but it's about the fact that he didn't want to leave the family. Yeah, it could be mm. right, right. Still yeah. holding on. He couldn't move on. Uh, no, I, yeah. I this story right it happened in my friend went back to India, mm-hmm. and then it was a two-story house, uh-huh. and then uh, his, I think they rented the the downstairs. They rented the upstairs to like a couple, and then the downstairs they it was their place, so they were living there, mm. and then somehow I don't know, but my friend said that. In Indian culture, um, you're supposed to shut, like you not face the window when you're sleeping. Don't keep your feet near the window. Yeah, yeah, Isn't yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that was exactly what his mom did. His mom was sleeping and her feet were like facing the window. Mm. She didn't close her windows either. Mm. And then um, suddenly that night, she felt like there was something strangling her in her sleep, and then like telling her like, like whispering something to her, saying that. Um, someone's gonna die. Someone upstairs is gonna die, and then really like a week later, right? The elderly couple that they were like renting the upstairs to, the man passed away from a heart attack. Oh, coincidence! Well, I, don't I don't know. Think so. It's a big house thing. It, but there was like this. Yeah. I don't know why this random thing strangled her to just tell her that. So weird, isn't it? But I've also heard stories of when people, new people, come to the house uh-huh. and they sort of invade the entire space right mm-hmm. some spirits can get extremely defensive and they may show signs of you know um, hate towards the family members mm-hmm. and whatnot and mm. they even give you verbal warnings like get out of my house kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah, 
I've heard about that. Really Have you in the process of like trying to bring like a client or a buyer to a house, and then they uh, just say, "I I don't know, I don't want to buy that, I don't want to buy this house," or mm. something weird like mm. maybe their kids start to like talk to someone or like. Maybe the wife mm. or, the, or the husband or someone in the family just look at one one corner, <laughs> like keep quiet, and, and then just mm. tell you, it's okay, like, we don't buy this house. Do you have experiences uh, whereby? Okay, not it doesn't exactly happen that way. Okay, uh, we built a house. Uh, I think somewhere in the north, north also. Okay. So this one day, <laughs> <laughs> so we you went, know the north is made up. <laughs> so we went to view. Uh, everything was okay. Husband mm. liked the house. Mm. Wife didn't say much. Mm. So when we were leaving. Uh, usually I will ask them like, at the bottom how do they find the house so that I can give some inputs yeah. uh, wife just didn't have any explanation mm. but she just, she just couldn't uh, feel it something's just not uh, not right mm. so really she, she herself couldn't have uh, she herself couldn't explain right. what she was feeling but husband really liked it so that's did, the they, did they end up buying the house? no they didn't because okay. oh. the wife really didn't want it she didn't okay. feel it la. really didn't feel oh, it or she felt okay. something wrong something was wrong yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, whatever it is, like I would like to thank Ashraf oh, for definitely. being here. Yes, you know, yes. because yeah, I think with him for... being here, you know, it really illuminate a lot of the queries that we have about what it takes to sell a house <laughs> in mm. Singapore. You know, yeah. But good luck, huh? Is is it something that you that you see yourself doing in the next five years? I hope so. Okay. So so, so, so money okay. has been good, huh? Of course. <laughs> Before not. you go, uh, alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. How much do you think our humble abode yeah. worthless, lah? La. Yeah. <laughs> no. A quote, it depends. Quote? It depends. I have to bring in the ustaz first. Really, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. No, because my house very, very interesting. That's the, not like EMF. We'll, we'll have, yeah, we we'll have. No, no, it's normal. It's normal, normal. Normal. Every <laughs> time happens on well, that. Well, Just well, a regular. We'll be, we'll be. But thank you so much, Ashraf, for being no here problem. with us. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you so much, you, Ashraf, you. for your time. Tune in to me, listen, me watch MediaCorp Entertainment on YouTube and MediaCorp social media platforms for more Screamer Pura scares. Don't forget to watch, listen, and scream. Thank you, Ashraf. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope Thank to share you. more stories in, in the upcoming episode. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>